for the interview. <laughs> uh, my first question is a very basic one, but I think it's very important to understand why we need to use sunscreen. First, to lower your skin cancer risk. Second, to prevent premature aging of the skin. And third, it helps maintain even skin tone. Then it's essential for you to apply regularly, daily, a sunscreen. Uh, I'm happy you mentioned daily because I know that most of the people they use sunscreen during the summer or if they go to the beach. Is this enough or not? It's not enough at all. And remember that the sun uh, does not need to feel hot uh, to damage your skin and your eyes. You don't have to forget uh, the impact of the UV rays on the eyes and uh, you have other risk in the mountain because uh, the UV radiation levels increase uh, with um, approximately 10% every 100 meters high and um, another risk is a snow reflection. There's a word saying that uh, actually the best anti-aging product is a sunscreen. It, is this true or is it just a myth? <laughs> it's not a myth. It's basically it's true because uh, by avoiding UV rays, you protect your skin from sun damages and from premature aging. When you apply uh, sunscreens daily before you're 55 years old, you have about 25% less risk of uh, sagging skins and premature aging and lines and, and the skin, which kind of uh, skin dehydration as well. That it has been proven clinically. Now that uh, I'm able a little bit to understand the ingredient list, I know that it's not that easy to, to choose the right product. And uh, I also found out that there are two types of filters used inside the sunscreens. There are the mineral and the chemical. Yes. And I would like you to explain to us what are the mineral filters, what are the chemical filters, and how do they work? And they have been classified in two groups, as I said. Uh, according to their nature, the inorganic UV filters, what you say it was chemical filters, it's inorganic filters, and they principally work by uh, absorbing um, the, 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 the UV. And um, the organic filters, uh, they can be UVA or UVB filters, and UVA, UVB filters, as for example, uh, the zinc oxide, and the, di the, the titan dioxide, which are what we call mineral filters. And the advantage of the mineral uh, sunscreens are that they do not need to be applied at least 15 minutes before uh, UV exposure because they, they work as they are uh, applied. So if I understand well, uh, the main difference between mineral and chemical filters is the fact that uh, the minerals, they are staying on the surface of the skin. Exactly while the chemicals are absorbed in the skin. They can be absorbed into the skin and it's one of the concerns we have with the, uh, the chemical filters. Um, one recent study has been published uh, uh, in the Uni United States by the FDA and we've seen that some of these uh, chemical filters uh, were um, found into the bloodstream. Uh, to me, it's not surprising to have this kind of data, but it's not to overreact, but we have to take care of what goes into the bloodstream, because if you speak to scientists, we know that some of these actives, uh, these ingredients, may have some um, impact of, uh, in, on the hormones, they are sometimes uh, disruptive for endocrine disruptives. Then uh, we have to take care of what is circulating into your body, especially for kids. When we talk about danger for this kind of ingredient, we talk about the main concerns we have, skin penetration, uh, circulation in the blood, allergy, irritation, and endocrine disruption. There are different uh, regulations within the world worldwide. Uh, the European is different than the 
in the United States and it's different in Australia, in China, in Japan. And um, not all the UV filters are permitted depending on the localization, depending on the, on the state. In Europe, you have a list of 32 different ingredients that are allowed in uh, cosmetic sunscreen because we have cosmetic sunscreen in Europe. Whereas in the US, you have only 16 different possibilities and from the 16 only two are considered as grays. Grays is uh, referenced as safe and effective and this zinc, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. <laughs> then these two are yes not banned at all and they, you have to select this one as a priority if you consider the kids. And now my curiosity is why uh, the companies who are producing uh, this kind of product, the sunscreens, they are avoiding the mineral um, filters. This is my impression after looking a little bit on the shelves and see that most of the products that you can find in pharmacies or in specialized shops, most of them they have chemical filters and not the mineral filters. Most of them have chemical filters because it's easier to formulate. It's easier to formulate and it gives you a peeling texture. And when we look at um, what we need is to be sure that the people uh, will love applying the sunscreen. If you apply a sunscreen and it, it seems that you have a, a, a white skin, and you have some residue onto the skin, then you start with your sunscreen and then you stop it because it's not appealing. Uh, but today, um, what we see is that uh, we have an increase in demand of new sunscreen with mineral UV filters. As a consequence, the companies that supply um, the, the, the filters, they provide for formulation new blends that are easier to formulate, they are very stable and they give you a peeling texture. That now it's not it's not the same that five years ago and we can provide very appealing texture uh, even with mineral filters. And because you're talking about, um, I don't know, the, the pleasure of applying a product, <laughs> even if it's a, just a sunscreen product, I would like to ask you about other ingredients because it's a big debate if it is safe to have uh, perfumes in the sunscreen, if it's safe to have silicones in the sunscreen. Of course, they, this, these ingredients, they are making the product more appealing, as you yes. said, but is this safer or not? First, as a reminder, um, again, all the ingredients that go into a cosmetic, even a, a medicine, they, they are regulated by health authorities. Regarding silicones, we know that we have some concerns essentially for the environmental. Um, we avoid silicones and we have to avoid silicones because it's not so good for the skin as well. Regarding perfume, it's like common sense. When you have a fragile skin, a fragilized skin, uh, a skin of the kids, you have to avoid this kind of perfume within the, the, the products avoid um, any oils coming from hydrocarbons for example, mineral oils for example, and um, select products that are considered uh, to be developed as a, as a medical product. For kids, you have to avoid spray because what you want is to protect, protect the skin of your kid and not to have risk to be swollen by the kids and then inhaled, yes. inhaled the skin and the lung. Then it's the first point. And the second point, it's better to have lotion or cream for kids because it's easier to know what quantity you applied onto the skin. For babies, before six months, even before uh, one year, you, that's again a common sense. You don't have to, to expose your kids to sun at all. It means to me you have to, to put them in the shadow and uh, give them UV uh, clothes and avoid any chemicals, any cosmetics. Thank you so much for the interview. <laughs> Thank you.